Morning Trainiacs. We are just a few days away from flying out to Ironman Kona, the World Championships of 2018. And that means let's kick that off with this year's edition of the Pro Race Preview. Hopefully Mel edited in a sound effect to make that very uh, dramatic. No. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> So, Trainiacs, like we do every year leading into the Ironman World Championships, we are going to cover who I think the main contenders are on the men's and the women's side of the pro fields. Now, until Jan Ferdino bowed out with a stress fracture in his hip, it looked like we were going to have one of the best matchups in modern Ironman history. Now he's gone, and that means that it's going to be a little bit less competitive, but we still have a lot of competitors out there on the men's side that are gonna be vying for the podium. Now, first off, Sebastian Keenly, a fan favorite. One of my favorites. A lot of people have been picking Sebastian to be on the podium, if not win the event for the last few years. Personally, I don't think he's there anymore. If you look at swim, bike, run, and my belief being that every athlete who is going to contend for the win in Kona needs to be strong in at least two of the three, and I'm not saying like just kind of strong, I'm talking world class in at least two of the three disciplines, Sebastian is not. He is world-class biking, but he's quite a bit behind in swimming, and he's not quite there running. So he could potentially contend for the podium, but I'm not necessarily going to pick him for it. David McNamee is obviously going to come up, being last year's third place winner on the podium, but this year, who the hell knows what's going on with David McNamee. Besides seeing him win in Marbella 70.3, we really haven't seen much racing from David this year. so. Is he gonna be on the podium? I, I didn't know him last year and I barely know him this year. So I don't know, flip a coin, maybe top five, maybe top 10, maybe, I don't know, gave up triathlon earlier. My pick for the dark horse to make it onto the podium is one of the only people to have beaten Javier Gomez over the course of 2018, that being Braden Curry. Now Braden is a front of the pack swimmer. It's like a second pack kind of rider and he's one of the best runners in the field. He set a course record beating Javier Gomez in Ironman Cannes this year and he was just 17 seconds behind Javier in Challenge Wenica. So anytime you are in the same sentence as Javier Gomez, you are one of the leading athletes to do well in the field. He's already raced Ironman Kona once in his career, being 2017, where he got the first year Kona traditional bitch slap, finishing 31st, and a lot of people go through that. It's a very steep learning curve going to Kona, so hopefully he takes that, and I think he could use his fitness from this year, combined with the knowledge that he gained last year, to have a breakout performance, potentially making the podium. But the podium race, I think, is a three-horse race between Lionel Sanders, Patrick Lange, and Javier Gomez. Javier's taken some lumps this year, fading towards the end of his first full Ironman distance race in Ironman Cannes, losing to eventual winner Braden Curry. He also came up with a side stitch in Ironman 70.3 Worlds, but he was going against the best in the world, Jan Ferdino and Alistair Brownlee in an absolute dogfight of a race. And he's proven year after year in multiple distances, multiple race formats, that he's one of the best triathletes to ever be in the sport. It is, however, his first year in Kona, so he's going to have that steep learning curve. I think that's going to make it hard for him to win, but being on the podium, I think is very likely for a guy who's ta as talented as Javier is. Lionel Sanders. Now I know a lot of you want me to pick Lionel Sanders to win. My heart wants me to pick Lionel Sanders to win, but my head tells me that he might not. And I worry that Lionel's head might talk him out of being the winner at this year's Ironman World Championships. And I'm sorry, Lionel, I love you, but you scare the hell out of me. What happened to you in Ironman Montreux Blanc, all of the nutritional changes that you've made, all of the race nutrition that you've made, it leaves a really wide spectrum between your good performance day and your bad performance day. 
on a good performance day with all your talent, with how fit you are, with all the workouts that you're showing us on your YouTube channel. A good performance day could be a course record breaking kind of day. A bad performance day could be a like not even in the top 20. That wide spectrum just makes me nervous to have confidence and pick you as the hands down winner. I'm sorry, I want to. Go Canada. That's why my pick to win on the men's side for 2018 in Ironman Hawaii is Patrick Langa. He's proven that he knows how to win and perform well when it comes to the big island. 2016, unspectacular year, breaks the run course record, finishes third on the podium. 2017, unspectacular year, breaks the entire course record and wins the event. 2018, unspectacular year, dot, dot, dot. What's gonna happen? I look at Patrick Langa being so well suited to Kona because he is light, he is a runner, he is a front pack swimmer, he's adequate on the bike, he knows how hard he can and can't go because he knows how much he's able to run people down in the run and he shows up ready to go on race day. That's why I think the difference between a good performance and a bad performance between Patrick Lange is quite a bit less than some of the other athletes. And when it comes right down to it, Kona is a war of attrition. It's a lasting game. It's not who's the fastest. It's not who's the strongest, who's the most talented, who's the, the smartest tactically. It's who can last the longest. And Patrick Lange proved last year that even at the very end of the race, he had speed, looked fresh, and was able to keep it together. That's why my pick this year is Patrick Lange. Now, let's get into the women's race. In a world now where, like I say, I believe you need at least two of your three disciplines to be world class, Marinda Carfrey isn't quite there. She's always relied solely on her run. Her swim is not necessarily first class. Her bike is not necessarily first class. Her run is amazingly first class, but that swim and bike performance puts too much pressure on her, in my belief, to win this year with a lot of the athletes that have come up from ITU and brought the long distance racing to another level. Heather Jackson is in a similar sort of role. However, with the bike being her strong suit, I think that her run and her swim puts a little bit too much pressure on that bike being amazingly world-class. And while she has dipped in and out of the podium over the last few years, it's gonna be tough. I think that this is one of the most competitive years that we've ever seen in Kona. So. You gotta be well-rounded now, and I don't know if Heather's quite there. Last year's third place female, Sarah Crowley, was injured towards the end of last year after having an amazing 2017, but we didn't get to see a lot of that fitness show through until just recently at Half Ironman Santa Cruz. She placed third at Ironman Frankfurt, but because she was injured, and we didn't get to see performances consistently like we saw in 2017, she's a bit of a question mark. I think top three, top five, very possible, but it depends how Sarah shows up. Is she fit? Is she completely over her injury? The more well-rounded dark horses that I think could be the rookies that come into Kona, make a huge splash and contend for the podium are the more well-rounded former ITU athletes that are excellent swim runners. Both Annie Haug and Sarah True, I think are part of that field that are elevating the competitive level of the women's race to another platform. Annie Haug ran the fastest half marathon in half Ironman Worlds in Port Elizabeth, placing third on the podium. And Sarah True had a flat in half Ironman Worlds, so we didn't get to see her fitness really shine. But in her full Ironman distance race debut at Frankfurt this year, she placed second. She comes from that ITU background, lots of speed, and she's been in the Big Island for quite a few weeks, gonna be well adapted to that heat, and she's pretty cool. So I want to see her do well. Now let's talk about the three women that I think are the main podium contenders this year, 2018 Ironman World Championships. I think Mel Hothschild is finally out. So uh, Mel Hothschild just sent me this email. I hope you are well and I look forward to catching up very soon in Kona. As you know, last year I had surgery for an external iliac artery endofibrosis in my left leg. It's a condition that comes on in some professional cyclists and triathletes after years of cycling. 
The iliac artery becomes fibrosed, therefore restricting blood flow to the leg. It comes on gradually, but then progresses to the point where not enough blood can get to the leg for it to fully function and it just shuts down. This year, I got back up to full strength after surgery last year and had a fantastic start to the season winning three regional championship races. I set course records and broke the Ironman world record in Texas. Two months ago, I raced in Cebu and my right leg shut down on the bike and I was forced to walk, jog, drag my leg across the line for third place. My number one focus this year has been on winning Kona, so I wasn't thinking clearly, and I put it down to not tapering for this race after coming off a big training block. I got home, tried to get back to training, but my leg wouldn't cooperate. My mind was playing tricks on me and not accepting that the endofibrosis could possibly have come in the right leg now. I ended up getting to the point that I can't even kick in the pool without my leg shutting down and could not run more than five minutes without the feeling of a gorilla sitting on my right quad and it cramping up. On and on and on. Mel Hothchild is out of Kona again and going in for surgery at the end of October. Sorry to hear that, Mel. My next pick for the podium... Anyhow. The athlete that I do think is going to be threatening Daniela Reef for the podium is Great Britain's Lucy Charles. Lucy is one of the next great athletes in triathlon. Not only just Ironman, but she could even go down to short course racing, build up a ton of speed, and make a lot of waves there. She's probably the best swimmer in the field, maybe neck and neck with Lauren Brandon, but in relation to gender, those two ladies are head and shoulders above the competition. She's developed herself into such a good biker that when Daniela Reef caught up to her and passed her in half Ironman world, she stayed on Daniela Reef's wheel her run isn't there yet, but that's natural. She's only been in the sport for four years, so give it a little bit of time, and I think she could seriously threaten Daniela Reef, but it's going to take a little bit of a chink in the armor to see Daniela Reef falter in the marathon. However, we saw last year that Jan Ferdino faltered in the marathon, and I think Lucy Charles is gonna come off the bike right with Danny, and all it's gonna take is just a slight slip up from Daniela Reef for Lucy Charles to beat her. But when it comes to choosing the winner on the women's side, I'd be stupid if I said anything other than Daniela Reef. After the year she's had, she has set a new standard that I think all the women in the field are going to be chasing. Besides the Lauren Brandon, Lucy Charles front pack that is way ahead of the basically main front pack, Daniela Reef is a front pack swimmer. She's the best cyclist in the field and one of the best runners. She's proven that she knows how to win in Kona. She's hungry to win in Kona. She loves winning. She is determined to win. So I think barring any mechanical issues, any injury issues, or any overall health issues, Daniela Reef is borderline unbeatable, so I'm going to pick her to win. So there you go, Trainiacs. I know that a lot of you out there are new to the channel, and if you aren't yet subscribed, hit the subscribe button below. We are heading off to Ironman Kona. We are probably gonna be coming out with more than a video every single day, maybe a podcast every single day. There is lots to see and do. We have a ton of fun things planned for Kona, so make sure you're subscribed, and if you are subscribed, you are my big island. Awesome. Can't wait.